So the home buying process can be quite confusing and you may have a lot of questions and there's a lot of paperwork that comes along with purchasing a house. One of them being the closing disclosure, which you will get towards the end of or near closing. So that's what we're going over today. I brought on our preferred lender, Manny from Centennial Bank here in Sarasota, who's going to be breaking down what exactly is the closing disclosure, how to understand the closing disclosure, what you get three days prior to closing. Right. And if you guys want more information on another key document, which is the loan estimate, we did also create a video. So click up in the upper left hand or right hand corner of the screen where we did also break down what the loan estimate and is and how to read it and what to do with it when you're shopping different lenders or brokers. So today, like I said, we are going to be talking about the closing disclosure, what that looks like and really how to interpret this five page document really. And like a lot of people have questions on how to read this, right? So. Thank you, first off, for coming onto this video and kind of breaking this down with us. But this one of the buyers that we had here, so we'll blur out all the private information on that. But I want you to just kick off the video and start talking a little bit about, you know, page one of this. You know, Absolutely. what is the main purpose of a closing disclosure? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. No, it's always a pleasure to be on here. Um, closing disclosure is probably the most important document you'll see throughout the transaction. Reason being is because these are the terms and conditions of your loan. Sure. In a nutshell, mm -hmm. this is a five-page document, like you said, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's going to state your payments, uh, the terms, uh, your cash to close, mm -hmm. um, everything that you need to know from day one to to year 30. Right. Um, and, and just like the loan estimate, I mean, the first page is probably one of the most crucial, I'd say, correct. just because it gives you a high, high overview of what to expect. Mm -hmm. Um, so very similar to the loan estimate, obviously it has the closing information, transaction information with Correct. the buyer, seller, lender, Correct. and then also uh, the loan information in terms of, you know, the loan term, the purpose of it, purchase, obviously, exactly. and then the product, if it's, you know, Correct. what product it is, this Correct. one is a 5-1 adjustable rate mortgage, Correct. loan type conventional, um, obviously loan ID and all that stuff. And it does show the sales price in the, in the left-hand side here under the yep. closing information. So mm -hmm. I guess let's just start off by talking about the loan terms and kind of moving down the page. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, you want to hold on to this document, you know, from day one, this, this looks identical to your loan estimate. So really you should be comparing this document to the loan estimate. Right. Um, you just want to make sure you, obviously your interest rate hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Um, first off, second off, you want to make sure your cash to close hasn't changed. That, that's, that's probably what you're going to look at immediately on page one. Right. But on page one, it's going to give you your loan terms, your interest rate, your monthly payments, um, and your payment, including your taxes and insurance. Sure. Um, I, I was actually, I just realized that this one uh, in particular we did actually went down, which should be the case. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't realize it went significantly down. Yeah. Um, but page one gives you all, you know, your, your cash to close and your closing costs and your monthly payments. You're right. Um, and what it and what he's referring to is this loan estimate here that we got, which obviously cash to close on the loan estimate was one hundred thirty one thousand six hundred sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. But then on the closing disclosure, it was one hundred four thousand six hundred fifty five dollars. So obviously a significant decrease. Huge, huge. And in, in this case, I'm not exactly sure what 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 the change was. I mean, I, I think um, it well, it was mainly I think just because it was quoted a little bit higher, maybe. It, it's definitely quoted a little higher, but that in this case, that's a, I mean, from 104, usually, like I always tell people, that number should be off plus or minus a thousand bucks. Sure. In this case, it's 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 a lot more than that. But sure. I, what I'm thinking here is the client asked to put more money down. Sure, yeah, right. Um, and I did notice that on the LE and the closing disclosure- It did go down 10K. Yes, 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 yep. yeah. Yep, yep. So then, yeah, so I guess that, Obviously, the loan terms of it, the projected payments, which we did go over in the mm -hmm. loan estimate, kind of what to expect. Correct. And then, obviously, ca cost of closing. Which Correct. You Correct. have your closing costs there, almost 14000 and then yep. cash to close, almost 105000 Correct. And then, basically, if we skip on to page two here, right. it's just it just basically, you know, overviews everything, you know, it breaks it down, itemizes everything, and we're not going to go through all of this, but you guys can take a look at it on the screen as well, but obviously, you have several different bullet points and what you can shop for, what you can't shop for, what the what the borrower did shop for herself, um, and then some of the other costs that are associated with that. So do you just want to point out some of the high overview things that people should take a look at? Yeah, so I think, you know, uh, section A mm -hmm. is, is critical because that's, I mean, you should have 
I'm seeing this on the loan estimate, not the mm -hmm. closing disclosure, but you want to make sure that, you know, the amount of points you're being charged is accurate. So right. section A, mm -hmm. you know, when you're comparing lenders, you're really only comparing section A of, right. of the loan estimate and the closing disclosure sure. to see who's giving you the better deal. And then obviously just everything else is kind of just breaking down um, your, your appraisal fees, your taxes and insurance, your prepaids. Um, I, I would make sure that your prepaids are accurate, meaning that they collected um, enough for your escrows. Right. Um, so here in, in our case, they collected 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, I would make sure that the, the, the prepaid interest is in there correctly. Mm -hmm. um, our client happened to close on the 28th of the month, so they only collected $230 right, per diem interest sure. at $76 a day. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, you know, the itemization is not super critical. I would just make sure that section A, no points. Yep. Um, yeah, so basically section A is probably the most differentiating factor between lenders and banks. And correct, right there, correct. Obviously, and we talked about correct. that in the loan estimate. Correct. You'll also see the appraisal fee mm -hmm. um, is listed at closing. Sure. Or, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, before closing. Yep, yep. So we always tell people, um, you know, on the LE, that shows you pay for it up front. Yep, right. Um, but we always tell people just comp on the closing disclosure, it's either going to say POC paid outside of closing mm -hmm. or before closing. Right. Um, so make sure that you're not paying twice for an appraisal. Sure, closing. of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that may happen. And then I guess going on to page three, it basically overviews calculating the cash to close, all that, how that was all added up and what that what that's going to look like for a lot of people. Because I know a lot of people may be looking at that and be like, oh, 100 and say the loan estimate showed 131,000. What was the difference? You know, now it's $105,000, which obviously in this case, it was, right. there's just a few other things that were going on here. Correct. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's, it just breaks it down a little bit more for those people that are like, well, why is, why do I need to bring that much to closing? You know, it's right. correct. It's, it all can be explained, right? Everything exactly. on this can be explained. And that's yeah. what the closing disclosure really is, is just to help people explain it a little exactly. bit more. Exactly. And then obviously as we go down here, you have summaries of the transaction, which I, for, you know, the borrower side and then the, the seller side, it kind of breaks it down a little bit more of, you know, the purchase price, cost, ca uh, cash to close, all that good stuff. And I guess since we're on page three here, what are some, is there any key, key things to take a look at? Or is this just basically for your knowledge kind of? No, I, I would, I would make sure that, you know, your, your taxes and insurance are listed accurately mm -hmm. on here. Um, I would make sure that your deposit is listed on there. Okay. If there's any credits sure. from the seller, I would make sure it's listed on here because this is you know where it's supposed to be listed. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I would, those are the main things that I would make sure of is credits. Sure. Um, make sure that uh, the per diem interest is, is, is okay. Make sure that your deposit is being factored in there that because that lowers your cash to close. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really about it. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's 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 pretty straightforward document. Right. Um, it looks overwhelming, but once you kind of look at it, what you know, two three times, it's sure. pretty straightforward. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all broken down. It's I mean, not too confusing. Um, but then I guess as we go on to page four here, I guess this is just additional information about the loan and kind of what that looks like. And is there anything really to look at here? Except obviously, this is an adjustable interest rate so in the bottom right hand corner it's going to have an adjustable rate table right uh, but that's not always going to be the case correct so is there any boxes here that people should look out for i mean i see partial payments here uh, is there what what's important on this fourth page um on this in, in this anything. one in in this one in particular um this is an adjustable rate mortgage so this is when your loan will adjust mm -hmm. so that's pretty important um I'm not. I'm not sure that this would. This is not going to come up on on a on a fixed loan. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, on a fixed loan, you're probably looking at a CD of three pages, not five. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but regardless, I mean, on page three, you'll you'll see um, the amount financed over mm -hmm. throughout the years, things of that nature. Um, page one and two of the CDs is the most important criteria, making sure that you know your your term, right? Your rate. Um, and that's about it. Okay. Yeah. And then moving on to page five here, obviously just goes through loan calculations, total, total of payments, obviously is that, that is 1.1. Correct. Correct. That is. 
So, so it, that's a big fat number right there, Manny. Huge, that's a on huge a, number. On a purchase price of five hundred five hundred fifty thousand sales price. Right. But and a then, loan of four forty. Correct. So are you saying that they're yeah. gonna pay over a thirty year term almost a 1. little over one point one million. That's correct. So But that's financing. Let's correct, so. correct. So just you know, just so people understand, this is given to you so you understand what your payment is gonna be like if you pay the minimum every Sure, month. right. You know, when you buy something of this nature, I would hope that you can at least get one extra payment per year because right. it's in your best interest. Um, unfortunately, this might be one of the few things in life that people buy with the intention of taking the longest amount of time to pay it back, yeah, right. just because it's the biggest purchase right. that they ever do. Right. Uh, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need more time to pay off your biggest purchase. I yeah, get. Of course. But what I'm trying to emphasize on is that you shouldn't be wired to think. Oh, I'm gonna pay this in 30 years. This is the normal. This is right. this is the normal, but it's not normal. Right. If that makes if uh, maybe that's a little too much information. I'm not trying to confuse anybody, but um, I'm just trying to educate people on these documents are worst case scenarios. Yeah, right. You know, and there's always ways to better. Correct. Um, so correct. To speak. Correct. It's better. You're not locked in to say pay over 1.1 million dollars because that means that's your you're right. basically paying six hundred ninety thousand dollars in interest right over correct. the 30 years correct. but like how you mentioned on this video and another right. video is right. if you make one extra payment a year it correct. can lower your loan by correct. seven years correct correct so, and if you do the number I, i'm willing to bet that if you were to take seven years off that 1.1 million you're probably eliminating a probably on 400k which is crazy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's crazy to think that yeah yeah but uh but yeah, so I guess going back to this whole closing disclosure thing, obviously knowing the numbers, mm -hmm. breaking it down a little bit, seeing mm -hmm. how important the first page is, mm -hmm. and obviously second and third page, mm -hmm. if you want an itemized breakdown. Right. What are some key takeaways would you say for people that are looking at a closing disclosure? Obviously we talked about a few things to look at, but what would you say are some other key, key things? Key yeah. things, I'd say hold on to the loan estimate. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing because that's what you want to compare. Which you're comparing this three page the, document to, to the close. Well, this right. one's five page, but the, it could be three pages. Correct, so. correct, correct. Um, just the loan estimate and the closing disclosure yep. are the most important documents you'll receive throughout this transaction. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would hold on to the loan estimate from day one and compare it uh, to the CD yep. uh, three days prior to closing. The CD should be better. The numbers should be more enticing. Right. Um, so don't get scared by the loan estimate. Expect correct. that that's high correct. because we told we correct. mentioned at the beginning if right. you're if the lender's low, they're right. the one that eat the cost. So they're gonna quote it a little bit higher. That's correct. Just to right. CYA cover correct. your ass. Right. Exactly. You know? exactly. So exactly. they over disclose. Yeah. So exactly. obviously the seller or the closing disclosure should be a little bit less. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Guys. Yes. yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you kind of breaking down both, I guess, the loan estimate and closing disclosure in the past couple of videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any other questions regarding the closing disclosure or any paperwork on the financing side of things, I will uh, add Manny's contact information down at the bottom of this video so that you guys can reach out to him directly with any financing questions that you may have. And if you guys are looking to buy or sell here in Sarasota or North or really in the greater Sarasota area, I am a broker associate. So we are able to help you with that. And I am co-founders of Jane Development Group, which is a custom home building company here in the greater Sarasota area, building custom homes here for clients from all across the country, basically. So if you guys have more questions about any of that, my contact information will be down in the description down below. And if you guys are looking to relocate to the area, we do have buyer's relocation guides that I'll throw up right here that you guys can view 100% free. And we do have an exclusive VIP email list for all the new construction builds here in Southwest Florida, mainly Sarasota, Northport, Venice. So if you guys want to join that email list, it's 100% free for you and specific to what you're looking for in terms of new construction. That link is down in the description down below as well. But once again, I appreciate you hopping on this video and kind of breaking down the closing disclosure. And if you guys have any other comments or questions, leave them in the comment section down below. But until then, we will catch you guys all on the next video.